Good morning. I've got an extra spring in my. In blah, 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 blah. I'm going a million miles an hour. I've got an extra spring in my spe in my step today. I got up an hour earlier, which sounds counterintuitive that I've got up an hour earlier, but I make sure that I still had my uh, maximized amount of sleep that I could get. Um, and I wanted to talk about the importance of daily rituals. And this is what made me think about this when I was sort of planning my day today, yesterday, uh, because I've got a sort of set ritual that I do every day, uh, which I've been doing probably for the last close to two and a half years now, um, when I was going sort of through my healing journey um, after all the stuff that I'd been through and I just made it a real point to get up and just making sure that I was owning the day with my ritual and it was for a bunch of reasons and this is probably more to do with I guess my physical health one of those things I talk about in your key areas of well-being is your physical health and my it, it's got a lot to do with my psychological health as well because my daily ritual includes obviously a lot of exercise it was probably more than the average person to be honest but to me um, I just notice a remarkable difference in how I feel when I exercise and, and there's two different um, areas to that because one of them is just general exercise and the other one is jujitsu jiu jiu which i think goes towards my intellectual intelligence as well because it's a very thought heavy uh type of hobby that you can do so it's not just physical fitness but it's very strategic as well and i've got a very strategic mind so i think that's why i absolutely love it so much and you know i started to set in daily routines because it's you know when I was going through this healing journey, obviously I didn't have a job. I did a little bit of work for myself here and there, but I was mostly under my income protection insurance. So basically, every single day I didn't even have to get up. I could just sleep until I wanted to sleep. I would just get paid money into my bank account every month. And it was for an extended period of time until I was basically able to have the energy and the health to sort of start working in, in any type of job again. I was sort of working part time and like reporting that to the company saying I'm making this amount of income and they were kind of they would kind of adjust my income protection insurance payments after that sort of thing. So I was very lucky that I had income protection insurance in that situation so it could kind of help me get back on my feet. Um, so I started to set in those daily routines and for me it was like obviously it was a fatigue management thing and it was also like a mental health thing because obviously when I'd been through something what I, like I'd been through, um, obviously you know if you followed my journey you'd know that it takes a lot of it was like a lot of psychological healing from trauma and all and and all the emotional stuff that comes along when you're faced with your mortality and you get pretty close to it so it was a, a lot to do with my mental health but a lot to do with my physical health so obviously I am still immune deficient and I have been like I'm probably chronically immune deficient for the rest of my life because of the type of treatment I went through. I'm going to inject these special needles into me once a week. So I'm immune suppressed. I've got uh, a shortage in my immunoglobulins, whether you know what they are or not, it doesn't really matter. It's just a part of your blood that helps produce antibodies to fight from different viruses and infections and things like that. So I'm, I'm quite a bit vulnerable in that sense. So uh that comes along with a lot of fatigue as well and obviously there's a lot of fatigue that comes along with uh doing the type of treatment that i did so me getting back on my feet was quite a hard task like it was a case of me trying to get up every day and just manage to maybe do half an hour of yoga and it was just managed to maybe walk around the block and then some days i could do it and some days i couldn't and this is still sort of an ongoing thing but i've built up over three years to the point where theoretically and I had doctors say this to me I shouldn't have the amount of energy that I should have you know because there's a lot of fatigue that comes along with uh, immunosuppression because your body's sort of always trying to fight against bacteria and viruses and I'm always sort of told to take it easy um, so that's a hard balance for me because I just want to constantly go forward and progress and get fitter and healthier but at the same time I've got to make sure that I'm not overdoing it and I have overdone it a few times in the last couple of years that's for sure and ended up in hospital with pneumonia and all sorts of things uh, which always takes a toll because it takes me out of my routine it's quite cr triggering for me to go back and stay in a hospital bed that I stayed in for three months it's quite triggering for Courtney uh, for to be left alone with Teddy because that's how she was for the first three months of his life essentially so these daily routines it just it came a point where I like just had to make the decision it's like a lot of things like I said when I'm being curious about your mental health and being curious about you know, wanting to sort out your financial situation, wanting to sort out your emotional state, wanting to sort out, you know, your spiritual state or whatever it is. It's just essentially making the decision. Because a lot of people think, and even this, I put myself in this category and you hear this all the time, you hear a lot of successful people say this, that I don't have time. 
I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to exercise. I'm a parent. I've got work. I've got all these things on in my day. But how I, and you know, I was exactly the same way, trying to fit all those things in, trying to work on those key areas of well-being, as well as staying fit, keeping my mindset in the right place and meditating, being a good partner, being a good parent, trying to make an income all at the same time. I know all those things are super difficult, but it's about reverse engineering the result, right? It's like a goal, like when you've got a goal in mind, this is what I need to do, this is how I need to get there. So you start to reverse engineer the steps. So if I was there, I'll go back and see where I need to start and then fill in the gaps in between there. And it's exactly like that with your morning, with your daily sort of routines and rituals. And like I can't stress the importance of this because once I've had a set daily routine that I've been able to follow, and it's probably been from maybe over the last 12 to 18 months, my mental state, my confidence, my health, my energy, absolutely everything, my mindset, my relationships has all changed based around my consistency in my daily routine to make sure that I'm meditating so my headspace is in the right space. I'm exercising so I feel physically well. Um, meditation comes down to the spirituality aspect of it as well. My emotional health, my, my relationships and how I feel about myself, my financial health because it's one of those things that every single day I take, Courtney, well, every single week Courtney and I in our routine for weekly and monthly, take a moment out of our weekend day to go through our finances, look, look at our spreadsheet, look at where we're at, look at where we need to be, and we're constantly staying on top of things. So, like I said, like making lists, it's just a linear fashion. And you know you've got your day laid out, you've got this linear fashion of how you know it's gonna go. So when it goes that way and it goes smoothly, it's your day sorted. You know where you need to be, you know when you need to be there, and everything just runs really smoothly. There's another important aspect of this, which I'll say at the end though, which is adaptability. But starting off, starting off with my routine, like I said, you reverse engineer it. So I start with my sleep. Sleep is the most important part of the physical health. Sleep is like a cheat code. You hear, hear athletes say this, if sleep was something that they tested for as a performance enhancing drug, sleep would be illegal. Because the amount of sleep that you get basically determines the amount of energy you have, your brain health, uh, your physical well-being. It's where your body gets a full reset and heals how it needs to heal. And I can vouch for this personally because obviously I've had kids, uh, I've got a kid, um, I've had sleep dep deprivation and insomnia because of different reasons through treatment and drugs that I've been on and it's an absolutely terrible thing to go through. And try sleeping in a hospital for three months, it doesn't even work, it just sends your mental state crashing downhill. So you reverse engineer from your sleep. For me, it's seven to eight hours. Seven absolute minimum, eight is key for me. Sometimes I feel if I sleep longer than eight, I probably feel worse off than I sleep just eight. So I base it around eight hours sleep and I reverse engineer it from there. So you take eight away from your 24 hours in your day and it leaves you with what you've got left. What's that, 16 hours in a day. You take your work day out of that, you got your eight hours in a day. Take your commute, you take your commute out of there too, let's say 10 hours in a day. So we're left, we're left with six hours. We're left with six hours to spend with your family, six hours to exercise, six hours to meditate, six hours to spend half an hour, one hour on your daily purpose, whatever that is, thinking and creating about the future for future goals, uh, looking at your finances. If you've got six hours to do all these sort of things and you can kind of spread them in between the morning and the night. But what I like to do is get up as early as possible. I like to be the first one up in the house. Obviously, I've got a child. He likes to wake up early. He can be a distraction. So I get up early. I get up earlier than everybody. Start my routine. I do my yoga. I do my meditation. I go to the gym. I come home. I do content like this. I spend like half an hour, an hour on my daily purpose. I spend time with Teddy before I go to work. I prep for work, I go to work for the day, I come home, spend some time with Teddy again, sort out any loose ends that I need to personally with Courtney, anything we need to talk about. Then I go to jiu-jitsu, usually two hours a night. Do two hours a night, I come home, I eat, spend a little bit more time with my family, I go to bed. I get everything done in my day there. Absolutely everything. And my mental state and how my life has been progressing has just like gone in leaps and bounds just by following my daily rituals. Now. Obviously, there's things that get thrown into the mix. Like, and this is what I want to talk about with adaptability. Courtney and I are really adaptable people. Obviously, we traveled and backpacked around the world. We went through a major traumatic thing we had to go through in our life and had to completely change our life around it and just basically be adaptable to it. So part of your, I guess, psychological, emotional state is knowing that if you can't get your daily routine done, it's one of those things where you just need to tell yourself, 
it's okay. It's okay I didn't get it done today. There's a, the universe works in the way it works for a reason. I'll just pick it back up tomorrow in two or three days, whenever it is, but I'll pick it back up again. Just know that I don't need to beat myself up about it and I need to be adaptable. Because if you're not adaptable and you start doing this routine and you're really set in it and you've got tunnel vision, like I've been like this in the past, so I had to learn how to be better adaptable about my routine, is that then something comes in, changes the plan. Like for example, I get up some early some morning, start my routine, Teddy wakes up, comes downstairs like, Dad, I want my breakfast, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I'm like, okay, it's all right. So what, you know what happens? I switch. My family time turns into earlier. I sort Teddy out and I switch back into my ritual and I'm just adaptable with it. But if I have to miss out on those things, so be it. Because my heart is way more full because I've been able to adapt to the situation and spend time with Teddy. It's the same thing if Courtney needs to go to the gym or go for a walk or whatever, I try to be adaptable around that. But she's also so great because she knows how important my ritual is to me and my health, both emotionally and physically. So <clears throat> I'll just leave it there. Daily rituals is key. I'm gonna chuck a link to a podcast in this description, which is uh, My First Million. I think it's episode 224 or 244 uh, with Rob Dyrdek from the Fantasy Factory. You, know, you might know him from the show Ridiculousness. There's a podcast on how he sets his routine for the day. He's extreme. He built a software around his daily ritual so he knows where he is, when he, what he does, when his haircuts are, when his meal's arriving. Uh, what time he spends with the kids is all timed out in a spreadsheet. That's a super intense version, but it's a really good guide to figure out when you see when someone's so structured in their day to figure out how much time you actually have to do these things. And like you don't have to start with everything at once. Like I said, it could be just starting at, at your sleep, your eight hours sleep, getting up at a certain time, and then figuring out what works best for you in that first two hours of the day before you start work and before you have your family time. Thank you very much for watching as always. I hope you have a fantastic day and I love you all.